Now, y'all already know what time it is. It is time for the mess. So let's get into it, you guys. What's going on, you guys? This be your boy, Scotty by Nature TV, and we are here for a brand new episode of Yes for the Mess, honey. All right, where we talk about celebrity gossip, hot topics, and all things reality TV based. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful hump day. And I tend on doing the exact same. What's going on, you guys? Now, before we get into today's mess, let's talk about what we got in the church announcements for today. Now, you guys already know that today is Wednesday, which means that it's time for a roaster review, and we will be over on giving you the real tease platform the link is already available in the roasted review playlist so make sure you go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom where you will see the brand new episode make sure you click on the notification bell so you can be notified and set your reminders because it will be tonight at 8 15 eastern time on giving you the real tease platform so make sure you guys tune in and also on thursday we have a special helping of the whether you like it or not panel where we will be discussing the fashion looks for this year's reunion okay so make sure you guys tune in to that the link is already Already available for that as well. So with that being said, you guys, that's pretty much all that we got for the church announcements for today. Now let's go ahead and get into today's mess. Okay. Now we're going to start this thing off with something that's less messy. Okay. Let's start it off with this. Now, as you guys already know, this is everybody's uh, favorite couple, Miss Sierra and Russell Wilson. You know, um, even Kay Michelle made a song about Sierra's prayer. Everybody wants to know how did she get that good man in her life, child. I think we all want to pray that prayer, honey, because I want to know where she got him and, and, and where can I find that same type of man in. That's why I want to know. However, they revealed on Instagram that Sierra is pregnant with baby number four. Sierra said, you look at me like that again. We make another kid. You my heart. I'm your real. Okay. One thing for certain and two things. One thing for sure and two things for certain. Sierra and Russell Wilson know they can get in their bed and make kids. There's one thing that I do know. I know their sex life is nowhere near um, empty and not full. We know that they're getting in because they keep on having babies, honey. And and um, let's look at the comments, child, because I know people give Sierra and Russell Wilson, especially Russell Wilson, a very hard time. And I don't understand why, because the man just minds his business and love his wife. I don't know why everybody be hating on him. If they don't do nothing else, they know they be hunching. Congratulations. I agree with that. All that work she be doing to her body only to get right back. On, um, right back and then get pregnant again. She really loves being a mom. I really love that for her. Congre congrats to them. Um, someone said he be getting this out of her. Everybody else is leaving hearts. They were like, damn, they don't be playing around. So happy for them. Congratulations. Okay. Um, there's a lot of people giving a lot of congratulations. It is a congrats that's in order for them because they are um the true epitome of black love in my opinion like i don't aspire to have the type of relation the same type of relationship that they have because you know um i don't look to um celebrity couples as couple goals at all i really don't never have never will but i will say that they are um they are a great couple um it, it kind of gives a lot of people hope in a sense you know what i mean like some people get find hope um, with these people, with these two people, because, um, you know, we know that Sierra went through a whole lot of stuff as far as, you know, being with the wrong man and stuff like that. Like we already know that she went through a lot of stuff with like 50 cent. She went through a lot of stuff with Bow Wow and you know, all that other stuff. So it's good to see her. Oh, and let's not forget future. You know, she went through a lot of sh with these men and she got a good man. She married, she happy. She keep on having babies. So, I mean, shout out to Sierra. The only thing that I need for her to do is make me a good song. But let me tell y'all something. In high school, when Sierra first came out, Sierra came out with that Goodies album when I was in the 10th grade. I was 15 in 2004 when she came out with Goodies, okay? Y'all can tell me nothing about Sierra back then. When she came out with Ann, I, I thought she would win Houston back then. Y'all can tell me nothing about Miss Sierra Princess Harris, all right? I was the biggest fan. I even had the Goodies DVD. I still got it. Loved me some uh some Sierra and um I'm glad to see her happy, but I need for her to give me a good album. 
because she ain't did that in a long time. That's the only thing I need from her. That's the only thing I need. That's the only thing I'm asking for. But like I said, congratulations to Sierra and Russell Wilson. It's always great to see, to see two black people happy. So let's go ahead and get into the next thing for the mess. And that is Mr. Neo, okay? Miss Independent himself, honey, okay? Now, you do know that Neo did an interview with Gloria Velez over there on Vlad TV where he talked about his opinion um, on uh, transgender kids and things of that nature. He even issued an apology to the LGBT community because he did not want to offend anybody. Well, he's doubling down on his thoughts on whether or not children, uh, about children identifying as different genders, okay? So let's go ahead and get into him doubling down on his opinion. Let's get into it, y'all. What's going on, loved ones? This is Neo. All right, listen. I normally don't give too much of a damn about what y'all think about what I do, or what y'all have to say about what I say, whatever. I normally don't care because, like I said, opinions ain't special. Everybody got one. However, this is something I feel very strongly on, and I need y'all to hear this from the horse's mouth, not the publicist's computer. So check this out. First and foremost, I do not apologize for having an opinion on this matter. I am a 43-year-old heterosexual man raising five boys and two girls, okay? That's my reality. Now, if my opinion offended somebody, yeah, sure, I apologize for you being offended because that wasn't my intention. My intention is never to offend anybody. However, I'm entitled to feel how I feel. I'm absolutely entitled to feel how I feel the same way you are entitled to feel how you feel. I ain't asked nobody to follow me. I ain't asked nobody to agree with me. I was asked a question and I answered the damn question. OK, I have no beef with the LBGTQIA plus community whatsoever. I What's going on, loved ones? This is Neo. I ain't got no beef with y'all. Do whatever the hell it is you want to do. Do what you want to do with your kids. However. Somebody asked my opinion on this matter, and this is how I feel. I will never be okay with allowing a child to make a decision that detrimental to their life. I will never be okay with that. I don't. I, I definitely plan to educate myself a little bit more on this matter. However, I doubt that there's any book anywhere or any opinion that somebody's going to tell me that's going to make me okay with letting a child make a decision like that. That's just period, point blank, and that's how I feel. If I get canceled for this, then you know what? Maybe this is a world where they don't need a Neo no more, all right? And I got no problem with that. I'm a hustler. All right? I'll figure it out. I got kids to raise, and I'm going to do that regardless. So with that being said, y'all have a good day. I love everybody. Live how you want to live. Love how you want to love. But your opinion is yours. Speak your opinion as much as you damn well feel like it. Because as I said, they're not important. They're not special. Everybody got one, and you're entitled to it. I'm entitled to mine. All right? Y'all feel how y'all want to feel. Have a great day. I ain't got no beef with y'all. Okay, and after he doubled down in the video, this is what he said in the caption for this particular thing. Now, he said, okay, this is getting out of hand from the horse's mouth. I will not be bullied into apologizing for having an opinion. Agreeing to disagree is not a, de is not a declaration of war. Lord knows I am not perfect. I've made mistakes indeed, and I've apologized to the people I've hurt for those mistakes. I couldn't cast a stone if I wanted to, which I don't, and I haven't. My intention is never to offend anybody, but my opinion is mine and I'm entitled to it. I don't care what y'all do with yours. That's yours. This is how I feel. If one of my kids, one of my seven kids were to decide that he or she wanted to become something other than what they were born as once they are old enough and mature enough to make that decision, so be it. Not going to love them any less. Daddy is still daddy and he loves you regardless. But this isn't even a discussion until they are mentally mature enough to have such a conversation. Period. Point blank. Whatever. Y'all do y'all and I'm going to do me. And we can agree to disagree and coexist peacefully. Love is the only true power, okay? And what you see is basically like a screen shoot of the um the thing that really got this opinion. This this whole thing started with him as far as him sitting on Vlad TV with Gloria Velez, where he was talking about parents of today have forgotten what the role of a parent is by allowing young children to identify as the opposite sex. Okay. So um like I said before, I was never, um, I never felt the way about what Neo said. I actually happened to agree with what Neo said. Um, I think that it doesn't matter what decision it is. It don't even have to just be about transgendering or anything like that. I just feel like any 
adult situation should never be made by a child. That's just how I feel about it, um, regardless of anything. Um, I don't I didn't feel like he was being transphobic, homophobic, LGBT phobic. I didn't feel like that's what he was doing. I just felt like he was asked a question and he gave an honest answer to it. And everything, and just because we don't agree with something that somebody says, it does not mean that it's an attack on us as a, as a community. That's the way he wants to raise his kids. He rather wait till the child is mentally mature enough to make that decision, to allow that child to make that decision. You know, that's all he was saying. He didn't say anything like, well, my child, if my son decided that he wanted to be a female, then I'm going to disown my son. I'm going like he went on no little boosie. He just he just said that he feels like a child should never make a, a decision like. You know, transgendering like he feel like they shouldn't make that decision at five and six years old. I, I'm inclined to agree with that. I don't feel like that should happen. That's my because I don't think kids really know what they're what they really want because they're not mature. They're not mature enough to know. Now, let's just say if a child is five years old and they got feelings about, you know, being transgender or whatever they want to be, that's that. But who knows that child can change their mind. But if those feelings continue to be there as they get older, then they're pretty aware of what they want. But the difference is they're no longer five. They're 15 and 16 and 17 and 18 years old. They're old enough to know what they want. They've been around enough to know enough to know just what they want. In the words of Monica. OK, so that's how I feel about that. I don't see nothing. I am not mad with Neo about what he said. I'm not mad with that because, again, I didn't feel offended by any means necessary about what he said. It's nothing phobic about it. I didn't see nothing offensive about it. All he did was give his opinion on how he would rather raise his children. His. Not yours. Not mine. But his. And if he decides that he would rather wait for his own child to be mentally mature enough to make certain decisions, that is his prerogative. Nobody else's. And I already know it's coming. Some people going to get mad at me for saying what I'm saying. I don't give up. If you do, it's the truth. We can all agree to disagree at some point. Like, there's really no need for everybody to be all up in arms about it. I don't really see the reason to be all up in arms about it because I don't think that he said anything that was wrong. I mean, like every time somebody has a have a difference of opinion in regards to us as the LGBT, it doesn't mean that they're attacking us. Because like I said before, um, he didn't he wasn't coming at us wrong. He didn't say anything out of the way. He just said how he felt about his own kid. That's how I feel about it. So we can move on to the very next thing. Now, let's get into Mr. Marlon Wayans. OK, now Marlon Wayans is under fire. OK, he's under fire because um, they said that he was accused of condemning black people who was involved in the riverboat brawl that set the Internet on fire this past weekend. So let's get into what Marlon Wayans had to say on an Instagram live where he addressed all the backlash that he received for um, stating his opinion on what happened with the brawl. Let's get into it, y'all. And why would I criticize black people for defending themselves? That's the thing about social media, man. It's left for interpretation. Y'all tripping. It make no fucking sense. None at all. I shouldn't even address it. That's stupid. But, you know, people want to make articles, interpretation. Do it. I don't care. Black people know I love black people. I'm black. And why would I criticize? They say one day that.
Okay, so somebody in the comments said you tried to make it seem like both sides were out of line. Nothing that you posted was in defense of these black people. Don't try to straddle the fence. Self-defense is never silly. Marlon said you thought oh, there was no fence straddle. It's irony and sarcasm. Next time I spell it out for you ignorant kids. Q. How's how's that? Better bet your stupid ass understands this. Oh, okay. Then someone said you would post this part. Y'all tap dance and celebrities get on my nerves. Captions like this show that you hate your own people. This is crazy. Someone said, Marlon must be looking for a pat on the back from his masters. You should be quiet and sit this one out. I don't get what you're trying to do here, confusing people and not telling the whole story. You are not even addressing how the people, literally all men and women, jumped and beat a black man, man for doing his job. Shame on you. Why are you not showing the entire video? Got the black people looking like they weren't provoked. Man, stop it. They deserved all of that. This man was doing his job by asking them to move. They answered with violence. Therefore, they deserved all the lumps. Oh, not all those lumps. You better slang those lumps, girl. <laughs> slang those lumps. Okay, but anyway. Let's look at the comment section on the neighborhood topic because I know it's got a whole lot of ignorant up in it. So let's look at the comment section. There go my girl, Ashley Miller. She always the first comment I see. This is what they say when they get the black backlash that they didn't expect. That's why I don't bash Marlon or the Waynes. They're one of the blackest, straight out the hood, respectful families to come up. They put so many people on that it's crazy, yet leave it to our own to bash. Okay, do we, do we need to get this chair? And Marlon has been questionable since Kevin Samuels, okay? Someone said, where's the sarcasm in that comment? A hit dog will holler. He cussed out that person in the comment showed that a nerve was hit. His entire family married white women. So who here is surprised that he's taking their side? Girl, by you did straddle the motherfucking fence. You wanted to be pro-black but condemned it all at the same time. Nigga. Because that's what they still see. He wasn't joking. Save the excuses. That's why Damon is the funny brother. Oh, no, y'all didn't. It's only sarcasm now because people on your ass sit down the least funny as Wayne's. Now he won't explain it like it was a joke, knowing his own people been harassed and racially pro profiled since before his grandparents were born. Shakes my head. Bro sounds like a moron. Take this L and do better next time since you know better. Well, people, people, people. The people were going in on Mr. Marlon Wayne's. They was really going in on him, honey. And let me tell y'all something. I don't blame them for going in on him. I'm not even gonna lie because at the end of the day, if you watch that video and you took, if you took, if you watch that video and you took anything from this video making the black people that attack those folks wrong, then you out of your motherfucking mind because they were not wrong for nothing that they motherfucking did. Not nothing. Because those people who attacked that security guard for no reason, they responded with violence and that's what they got in return. That they deserve to get whatever lump, whatever, whatever scratch, whatever sore they got on a motherfucking face. That's how I feel. And that's how I interpret it. So now that you're getting dragged Marlon, you want to get out mad and you want to cuss people out. It's too late to be trying to cuss the people out, honey. You decide to go out there and put that whitewashed ass statement out there and make yourself look like a motherfucking fool when you could have just shut the fuck up and said not nothing. Because at the end of the day, when it's times like this and you see that our people are being attacked like it ain't shit, and you want to put something out like that, expect the backlash. Don't think they're going to let you go out and not say nothing to you. They're going to say something. And you know they're going to say something. So what the fuck you talking about, Marlon? What are you talking about? They were going to say something to you. They was going to sock it to you like Missy Elliott. Ooh, I sock it to me like you want to. Ooh, and you was going to take it like a pro. You don't know. Do a long go with your black, with your backstroke. With your hormones dropping like a disco. And they was, they was going to be popping mess like some Crisco. All we got to say is Marlon go. Okay, that's all we got on that. So we can just move on from him because I ain't finna sit on him. Now we're gonna stay, but we're gonna stay on topic, but it ain't just about Marlon, it's about the riverboat itself. Now we got more coverage on this riverboat incident. There is more um there is more, what is it? There is more to talk about in regards to this. There's more updates rather about this whole um bar, not bar, but riverboat 
incident, okay? So we're about to go ahead and get into it, and we're going to let you guys know what's going on with it, okay? Now, they say that three white men face assault charges for the Montgomery boat brawl, and police are asking the folding chairman to contact to attack, to contact, I'm sorry, the police immediately. Let's get into this. I think this was a press conference. Let's get into it, y'all. Thus far, I've been identified as Richard Roberts, white male, 48 years old, with two outstanding warrants for assault, third degree. Alan Todd, white male, 23 years old, one warrant for assault, third degree. And Zachary Shipman, white male, 25 years old, uh, one warrant for assault, third degree. We have instructed those individuals to turn themselves into law enforcement. And as uh, at this time, uh, one is secured and in custody. The other two are set to turn themselves in within the next hour. We're also asking for Mr. Reggie Gray, the black male, 42 years old, who was seen wielding that folding chair to contact the Montgomery Police Department for further interviews and as part of this investigation. Thus far, I've been identified as Richard Roberts, white male, 48 years old. So it says Montgomery, Alabama authorities addressed the brawl. The captain of the riverboat remained away from the dock for 40, 40 to 45 minutes because the private boat was blocking. The owners of the boat confronted the co-captain of the riverboat were obscene and aggressive. He was doing his job. 13 people were detained but were ultimately released. Richard Roberts, age 48, white male, warrant for assault of the third. Alan Todd, white man, one warrant pending. Zachary Shipman, age 25, a white male, one warrant pending. These are misdemeanor charges. All of the warrants are for the owners of the private boat. One is in custody and two are set to turn themselves in. Rich Reggie Gray, the man wielding the folding chair, is being asked to contact the police department. The um, investigation is ongoing and more charges are likely. This is breaking news. Tonight, we're following breaking news near Montgomery's Riverfront Park. A fight beside the river has led to multiple arrests. Welcome to the News at 10. I'm Brady Talbert. A viewer sent us this video, which shows the fight just feet from water. A witness claims it started because a pontoon boat was blocking the dock where a river boat was trying to park. You can see more people jumping in as that fight played out. Well, soon after Montgomery police arrived at the scene, they say a large group of people were involved in this brawl. Our crew saw people in handcuffs. MPD says several people have been detained and any charges are pending tonight. MPD told us about this attack just in the past hour. We're going to keep you updated on this developing story. This is breaking news. Tonight we're following. At this point, I don't think anybody is going to help the police as far as finding the dude with the chair, because at the end of the day, there wasn't a dude with the chair. That was a um, that was somebody else with a chair. I don't know who that was, but there wasn't that dude with the chair. It wasn't a dude. That was a tiger with the chair. That was actually a cat with the chair. It wasn't a human being with the chair. So therefore, um, the the the, the you know the 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 ant well mm, the cat or 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 you know the cartoon character that had the chair is not going to be you know can't be charged with anything right so yeah we're not really trying to um yeah because they was only doing the lord's work um whoever that was with the chair you know i don't even think that was a black person with the chair but whoever it was they was doing the lord's work and that's all that really matters is that they were doing the lord's work isn't that the, isn't that the case okay honey all righty then so that's all we got for the riverfront um update that's all we that's all we do know about it but let's go ahead and get into the next thing so this is this is one of the biggest things that everybody been talking about and that is this um court case with Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion now apparently before we get into the sentencing of Tory Lanez we're gonna get into Kelsey Harris who could possibly be um who could possibly be facing a fine or um, confinement if found in contempt of court for blowing off Megan Thee Stallion's deposition in regards to the 1501 entertainment suit, okay? Now it says, it looks like Megan Thee Stallion is not letting up on her ex-bestie Kelsey at all. According to documents obtained by the Radar Online, Meg is reportedly demanding that Kelsey be found into contempt 
for allegedly blowing off a deposition. In her newly filed motion, Megan said that Kelsey was served the subpoena and may but failed to appear for a June 21st deposition. She asked the judge to force Kelsey to show up. Now, this deposition that Meg is accusing Kelsey of blowing off is in regard to Meg demanding that Kelsey sit down to turn over her private text with Tory Lanez. Meg also wanted Kelsey to answer whether or not 1501 endorsed her diss track in evidence revealing that Kelsey's husband, Darren, was an executive at 1501 and had knowledge of the label's alleged attempts to sabotage her projects. If Megan can get this deposition from Kelsey, she believes that it could prove several points of her argument for trial. If Kelsey is found in contempt, this could possibly lead to a possible fine or confinement. If you remember, we previously reported about Megan heading to trial against her former label, 1501 Certified Entertainment, an executive called Crawford, okay? The court battle has been going on since 2020, okay? Now, let's look at the comments. Everyone was calling her a liar. Now she wrong for trying to prove her case. Meg ain't got to say ish. Everybody that tried to come against her is losing it all. And that is true. Baby, Megan got a praying grandmother because he is surely, she surely is, um, because he is for sure sitting at her table in the presence of her enemies. For someone who screamed this would all come out in court, she refuses to speak in court. Y'all think it's cute to play in people's faces online, but in real life, there are consequences. She low-key trolled on the stand like it was um, like it was IG. All sis is coming to collect everybody. Should have kept that mouth shut. Mm. Meg is strong because all of this is draining. Honestly, she needs to be in jail, too. Karma, when Meg decided to sleep with Tori, all Kelsey's loyalty went out of the window. So I don't care why. She, I don't I don't see why she acting like Kelsey owe her something. Y'all screaming karma spin the block when really it need to spin the block on a person who slept with a friend's man. Caused the scene at a party and lied about the entire incident for years on public platforms. Better watch what y'all ask for. Megan the aggressor turned victim. Okay, I know I need to start reading these comments now. But yes, and I agree with a lot of the folks in the comments that Kelsey needs to go to jail, honestly. Like, she needs to be right there in that cell with Tori because I know that there's a lot more than what she's saying about this situation. But, child, it's just crazy to me how she's now laying up in the bed with the nigga that with one of the executives that was trying to take Megan money or trying to scam her or won't even allow her to release no music or whatever, whatever the issue is. But, uh, yeah, she need to go, she need to go and, 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 um, and get her just due to be honest because of the simple fact that, uh, baby, you need to go to court. You was, you needed to be asked to be there. You was asked to be there. And that was just that. So you need to go on and do what you need to do. Now, next up is this Tory Lanez is sentenced to 10 years in the Megan Thee Stallion shooting case, okay? And, and this comes from Megan, okay? Just in, Tory Lanez has been sentenced to 10 years for pow pow and Megan Thee Stallion, okay? Let's get into it. Now, Tory Lanez also stated that he still cares for Megan. So let's get into it. Tory spoke for several minutes and he said that he still cares, cares for Megan. He called her someone I still care for dearly to this day, regardless of what she may think of him. He said, the victim the victim's my friend. He talked about bonding with her over the loss of their mothers, okay? We both lost our mothers. We would sit there and drink and drink and drink until we got numb, Tory Lane said of Megan Thee Stallion. About the pow pow, I said some very immature things that I shouldn't have said, and I revealed some secrets that I shouldn't have revealed, okay? Then, okay, that, so that was, that was it on that. Okay, so let's go to the next thing. If there is something else here. No, that's about Billy Porter. We ain't talking about Billy Porter. Okay, what else is going on, honey? Let's see. Okay, let's get into it. There's more information about this case where we found out that DJ Fatademics was the one who re, uh, was uh, Tory Lanez leaked the information of DJ Fatademics um, during the case. Let's get into it. The judge found that Lanes leaked it to academics. I'm like, well, Lanes' own lawyer said that. I mean, they they described that, that that's how it happened in the the document. So if and, and look, if I, I I can respect that he doesn't want to ever reveal who gave him that document. Like he shouldn't have to do that. But uh, the fact is, I mean, he, the judge found that Lanes leaked it to academics. I'm like, well, Lanes' own lawyer. And this is DJ Academics' previous tweet that sparked the back and forth with Megan, okay? Y'all remember that? It said, breaking. It was revealed in court a few moments ago that Tory Lane's DNA was not found on the on the weapon in the Meg Thee Stallion case, okay? 
then this is what Megan's response was to DJ Academics. And she said, I know some of y'all blogs are on the payroll, but please don't get sued trying to create a hate campaign. Be a real journalist and post facts, okay? And to my haters, keep making yourself look stupid. I don't care. Y'all got breaking news 15 minutes before court started and nobody has even been called in yet. Y'all trying to win a social media campaign. This is my real life and y'all trying to get retweets spreading false narratives. I um, And I am academics why are you lying what did you gain and then that's when he came back with hey i don't give up about what you got with tory y'all can play y'all pr games we know what you and rock nation is doing i don't care just don't try to bring in my brand you literally a peon in the game 1501 owns you and you beg them every beg them every time to drop a song you so bothered by my tweeting that over my tweeting over over my tweeting out facts about Tory case. Go ask the DA. DNA results were submitted in discovery. Why you care so much about what the internet says? Oh, I know. You've been living off a narrative and it's sad you made it to where you you made it where if Tory don't go to jail, you don't win. You can't win. You can't live in me in your life. You literally signed to a managed by a firm and signed to another conglomerate. You don't own nothing. You put out. You literally won all your awards off sympathy. Of this, you got a shot storyline. Get your masters back, then holler. Mm, I wonder what he got to say now. I can't stand it. Oh, I ooh. okay. Anyway, what's next up on this? Because I think DJ Academics actually responded to this. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yes, DJ Academics did respond to this. So let's get into what his fat ass had to say. Let's get into it, y'all. I can't wait till I get arrested. Arrested for what? I'm not in the case. I'm a citizen, my nigga. Here's the facts. I can say whatever the fuck I want. Because I have an audience, that's your problem. I don't give a fuck. So now, and, and, and listen, I'm up in the ante because I think people really think that niggas like me is bitches. You are. Bring the lawsuit or, I, or I'm going to tell y'all to suck dick every day. Y'all got to bring a lawsuit. And I'm telling you, I got a half a million just that Suck dick, all y'all. Meg, Megan Cuniff, Meg the Stallion, all y'all. I don't got to tell you who the fuck gave me that information. If it was a serious enough, if it was a serious enough um, problem, that fucking judge would have fucking tried to subpoena me. I'm not in fucking California. Any of y'all commenters in neighborhood talk to? First of all, y'all all broke. It's crazy. Some of these hoes is like, yo, oh, act don't got... Bitch, stop fucking playing. I got more than your favorite rapper, unless it's Nicki Minaj. I can't wait till Act get arrested. Arrested for what? The judge found that Lanes leaked it to academics. I'm like, well, Lanes' own lawyers said that. I mean, they they described that, that that's how it happened in the the document. So if and, and look, if it, I, I I can respect that he doesn't want to ever reveal who gave him that document. Like he shouldn't have to do that. But uh, the fact is, I mean. He, the judge found that lanes leaked to the academics. I'm like, well, okay, before we even get into anything else about this case, because I just want to take out a couple of minutes just to say this DJ academics, bitch, you. Okay, can we start off by saying that? Fuck you, you turtle looking ass mother, you. You always running your bitch ass mouth about female. That is the reason why your bitch ass is in this motherfucking predicament right now. You mad because the people calling your fat ass the fuck out. Shut the fuck up. Then you want to say, oh, every all these bloggers and the neighborhood talk, all y'all broke. Bitch, you look broke. You sitting up in a room that smell like shoes and fucking, and, 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 and fucking Fritos. Shut your ass the fuck up. You always saying something. You always running your mouth. Does anybody ever see you out in the streets? Do you go to the industry parties? Do you be around the nits that you be talking about? Because let, let's let's just be honest. You sat your broccoli built ass, okay, on Twitch in your room, in your dusty ass room, talking every day about Meg the Stallion. But when it's like LL Cool J, and when like Diddy come to your fat ass, you ain't got nothing to say. You apologizing and shit. But yet, you were sucking on Tory Lanez this whole motherfucking time. 
And now that he's sentenced to 10 years, now you want to sit up here and get mad at everybody else because they want to drag you. Yeah, we're going to drag you, bitch, because you was the main motherfucker that had something to say. You always running your motherfucking mouth all the time. Shut the f up. We don't give a f about your audience. We don't give a f about nothing that you're talking about. F you. Okay? Your opinion don't matter to us. We just want to drag your chest. Like, shut up. Like, for real. Like, who the f you think you are, though, academics? Like, who are you? Because I didn't know you until you was on the everyday struggle with your bud. Who the fuck are you talking some? I probably got more than what your favorite. Which, I probably got more than what your favorite uh rappers got. We don't give a fuck about what you got. See, that's the thing about it. Every time you motherfuckers get dragged, the first thing y'all want to run to is what the fuck you got. As if anybody gives a fuck about what the fuck you got. Shut the fuck up. Okay, shut the fuck up. You a big ass bully. Busting shots when you know your chin ain't strong. Shut the fuck up. Like, for real, though. You giving Sandy Cheeks annoying-ass brother who always looking for a hug all the time. That's what the fuck you giving. Looking like a damn, looking like a squirrel's uncle or some shit. Like, bro, shut the fuck up. I can't stand your big fat ass. Okay? And you can call me, you can, you can say I'm fat shaming all the fuck you want to. I am today because I don't like this motherfucker. Kim, he got so much to say about everybody the fuck else. So do you really give, like, I give a fuck about him and what he got going on and how big his ass is? I don't give no fuck. I'm going to call it for what it is. And what I see is a whining ass fat bitch who always got something to say about something all the time. Then when he get drugged for it, he want to throw in what he got and, and everybody broke. We don't give a f if we broke or not. Bitch, I work at Kroger and I'm dragging you. So the f what? And getting paid to drag you in front of my damn laptop and webcam, bitch. What the f Shut the f up. When I tell y'all I don't like uh, academics, I don't like him. I don't like his rabbit mouth ass. He just get on my nerves, like, for real. For real. I don't like him at all. And it's crazy. Looking like you porcupine looking ass bitch. Seriously. I don't mm -mm. he can go to hell for all I care. Like he like he always got something to say. And it's always something negative. But you don't keep that same energy for everybody. So you don't say that. See, you you don't keep that same. See, you always going for women and shit. You know what I mean? Like you going for Meg, you going for young Miami, but when LL and and Diddy pull up into your DMs, your fat ass ain't got nothing to say. Shut the fuck up, you panda bear looking bitch. I don't like you and you need to shut the fuck up. I hope one of these motherfuckers catch your bitch ass in the street. Then you talking about, yeah, some of y'all must think that I'm a bitch. We don't think you a bitch. We know you a bitch. That's what we know. We know you a bitch. Bitch. I don't like him. Anyway. Let's get into one more thing. Somebody by the name of Heather Rose came along, and this is what she said. She says that Tory Lanez doesn't deserve 10 years for grazing M Meg's pinky toe. She said, I just deleted all three of Meg Thee Stallion's songs out my phone. She did wrong, and she know it. A grazed pinky toe does not equate to 10 years. I don't give a... F First of all, who the fuck are you? Anyway, who is Heather Rose? Do y'all know who that is? I never heard of her until today. Um... I'm guessing she's some groupie mother. I don't know. But girl, shut up. I don't give a damn if it was her pinky finger, girl. Shut the fuck up. He deserved everything he got because it ain't really just about the shooting in hand. It's about all the harassment and, and, and embarrassment and humiliation that he put that girl through for all them damn years and calling her a liar and got everybody dragging her 
all these motherfucking bloggers dragging her ass to pieces. Okay. And now that she won her case and now his ass is being sentenced, now some of you motherfuckers can't take it, but you can get the fuck over it, though. That's what you can do. The is in jail, and that's just that, and you're going to have to deal with that. He in jail. He going to have to do more than just say. You know what I mean? The last thing. <laughs> he going to have to do more than just prove it. This is the only song I know about him anyway. First of all, I'm glad he in jail. He got 10 years. I'm glad he's he's going to serve his time. That's what you do when you break the law. That's what you do when you shoot somebody. You're supposed to go to jail. He did that. I don't care what nobody say. Meg lied on the stand. Uh, lied about some things. Yes, she did. He lied about some things too. Uh, Kelsey lied about some things. The only thing that I'm going to say about it is that credibility and the truth is always going to be questioned when it comes down to all three of them because all of them lied about something. But ultimately, we got to what really happened. He, ha. Huh. And that's all that really matters. And for those of you who want to be male identified idiots and sit up here and really believe that he didn't do nothing to that girl, you can go ahead and do that. But I've been team Meg from the very beginning. I don't give a fuck who got a got problem with it especially niggas like fucking dj academics oh y'all okay shout out to my girl megan ah okay so anyway with that being said this be your boy scott about nature tv be sure to like rate comment subscribe and share this video and also click on the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops and if you want to follow me on any form of social media my twitter my instagram and my tiktok will be down below in the description box with that being said you guys your boys up out of here and until my next video i'll talk to you guys later and i will leave you guys with the promos from my new panels that are dropping starting in september i'll talk to y'all later bye